Most people know why playing with oh, a Portuguese man of war is bad for your health. You heard me say most. The man of war is notorious for excruciatingly painful stings that they inflict on thousands a year. Not only can it cause nasty ah! bites like this, in worst case- Oh my God! Oh God! Oh God, I literally felt that. I had to like look at my arm to like make sure I wasn't going through that pain. Right, my skin is crawling. All right, man, look. We got some casual Geo. He done dropped another banging on us. It's uh, cute animals, but they slowly get worse for your health. Let's look at it. Oh no, cute. I think a common theme on this channel is cute animals being in serving humanity haunting pretty privileged merchants. And that's what this video is about. And the further we go, the higher your chances of being turned full-time horizontal. Okay. Before I do say this, when I call something a homicidal menace, that's not that's just me using hyperbole to season a sentence. I'm not actually trying to get y'all to go out and drop kick an otter or something. Ultimately, these animals are just trying to survive and are doing what comes naturally, so you can't really judge them by human moral standards, even, even though that's literally what I'm about to do. And starting off, this is not your average mouse. First of all, it's a straight up carnivore. In their defense, that's carnivore? not exactly crazy. Squirrels have been known to raid nests and eat the baby birds inside. But no I didn't know that. Excuse me? Bro, since the fuck when? No other rodent is more of a meat eater than the grasshopper mouse. And its grocery list can include anything from insects, worms, and spiders, to mantises, scorpions, and desert centipedes. Oh my AKA god. AKA the same cursed crawly that nearly no! unsubscribed coyote people from existence. Jesus, can grasshopper I? mice will oh my even god. murk and eat snakes. Snakes? Oh my god, bro, what the fuck? Oh, I, I don't like centipedes. I don't like centipedes, but god damn. Nah, this is actually, this nigga, he bout that. This rap from O Block, gotta be. He not from 63rd. That's what he said. Basically, you remember that episode where Jerry took PEDs and nearly put Tom in a tombstone? That's the grasshopper mouse times a thousand. This mighty mouse even developed a resistance to the crippling venom of ops like the Arizona bark scorpion. Oh, not hell. only can they tank hits that would flatline animals a hundred times their size, this rogue rodent shuts down the Jesus pathways Jesus fuck, stop showing that shit! ...toxin takes to cause pain. Meaning, this mouse essentially evolved to be impervious to the pain caused by venom. It can feel pain, it's just not gonna oh, come from a scorpion. God. That's not even the only thing about them. These mice stalk and hunt stop their prey fucking exactly showing like this cats. Shit. This homicidal hamster will even howl after catching a body to mark their territory. Take a listen. Niggas sound like a fucking, uh, what's them, them fucking teapots. <laughs> niggas sound like, nigga, nigga let out a teapot scream after he kills somebody. Oh my God. This is warrior call, fuck. So imagine being a scorpion, right? Millions of years of evolution. Your ancestors were apex predators and you have biological warfare on your side. All that for a pint-sized mouse to be your downfall. Damn. Not even other mice are safe. He just Grass chewing his ass. Eat other rodents and cannibalism is not off the table. In fact, there was a story of a scientist keeping a grasshopper mouse and making the mistake of leaving it alone with a lab rat five times its size. In the few minutes he walked away and returned, there was one less mouse and the number one suspect feeding on the carcass. Oh my Proof God. Proof even the most innocent looking platter can serve death. Especially since the predator oh, has the highest body count, is not what you'd expect. No other mammal catches more bodies than the Etruscan shrew. They're one of the smallest mammals alive, and they weigh less than two skittles. The shrew two is so skittles? small that the only way they can survive is by killing more prey than any other animal. Basically, what? if this candy-sized carnivore doesn't eat twice its weight in food every day to fuel its metabolism, they'll essentially freeze to a flat line. So the Etruscan shrew has to end the life every two hours or so, and they hunt by biting their prey through the head to disable it and then tearing it apart before oh my another God. can get to it. And just for reference, if I had to eat twice my weight in food every day, I'd be scarfing about 680 Big Macs every 24 hours. And even then, at least I don't have to hunt the burger. By the time I get to the drive through the job's already done. But the shrew does have a weapon, and it's being one of the very few mammals on Earth to weaponize venom. According to studies, some shrews are toxic enough to delete 200 mice, and while they're too small to turn a human to a hashtag, it's still capable of causing pain and allergic reactions. Not only that, oh but some God. shrews are able to catch a calorie come up underwater, since some are able to smell out- Excuse me? Excuse me? It can smell underwater? Not only is this nigga on lead and kindling shit, he, he go underwater killing shit? Prey, ...even while being completely submerged. Yeah, they're a whole mint-sized menace, but too small to be a legit threat to us. That's not going to be true for some of the animals coming. Oh my. And up next, this bird probably looks no different from something you'd expect in a garden. Except Crow? it's only found in the islands of the oh. Galapagos. And to survive, they've come up with some nasty tricks. They've been nicknamed Darwin finches since they actually helped prove Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Long story short, different finches ate different foods and so developed different size and shaped beaks. 
One finch evolved to finesse an easy meal by pecking at the skin of bigger birds and drinking the blood that spills out. Dog, nah, that's, that's, kind of, that's crazy. Y'all, you don't feel that? Reverse Magic Johnson, okay, man. Finesse an easy meal by pecking at the skin of bigger birds and drinking the blood that spills out. Are birds even f***ing real? And scientists believe up to 10% of this flying leech's diet is seabird blood, and their favorite victim is a bird called the booby. Don't laugh, it's not funny. <clears throat> it's not funny. Popular opinion says that it started with the finches picking parasites off the birds, but after realizing they could live off the marinara that would often leak out, the vampire finches started turning the birds into booby blood banks. They literally became everything they sought to destroy, and they're skilled enough to know how much damage to do to get a ragu reward without doing too much and losing a future victim. Yeah, these birds drink nothing but blood, which they kinda have to since fresh water in the Galapagos is in less supply than lawyers in heaven. Oh but it my also God. means that even though they can fly, Arab would be completely useless to them. But not to you, because Arab's flavor pods use scent flavors. Hey, to W uh, sponsor. Let me skip over. No, say get your get your bread up. Dirty no, pennies, no. you know. It's just too bad finches don't drink water. Otherwise, Arab would save more boobies than free mammograms. Not only do they grief bosom birds, but finches will often roll eggs out of nests and crash them in the rocks just for some easy protein. Not only is you fucking up the parents, you killing the babies before they even hatch. Dang. They're not even the only birds in that kind of timing. The New Zealand Kia will use that Swiss Army knife of a nose to cut into sheep and eat the fat right off their backs. And sometimes they freak the sheep out so much they yeet themselves off a cliff trying to get away. Oh At my least the Kia and the vampire finch are only harmful to your mental. From here on out, that is the last time that statement will be true. Because this live action plush toy is also on the short list of venomous mammals. Of course it is. Slow Loris is a Southeast Asian primate armed with toxins. Oh, look at his fingers! Uh, look at his little finger. Oh god. Oh, man, what if he like touched you? Oh my, his face, like, his eyes are adorable, but look at them fucking, look at them, look at them fingers. Them, them the fingers of niggas that you don't want touching you, because they got, like, little fingernails with big fingers. Oh my, uh. Real damage to a human. They have a gland on their arm that produces a chemical that becomes highly toxic when mixed with saliva. So when this imitation lemur sees you and puts its hands up, it's not a sign of surrender. It's a promise to ascend you. We talking straight soul eviction. In 2012, a biologist was bitten by a slow loris, and this was him after one hour, and this was Buddy after an hour and a half. Since the toxins contain chemicals similar to cat allergens, this venom monkey can trigger anaphylactic shock in people. They give the first animal here that can perform landscape work on your family tree. We used to think this malicious muppet used venom against predators, but it turns out it's for friendly fire. They usually what? use it in spades with other lorises, and the flesh melting toxins can cause necrosis, meaning the loser loris can lose an eye, a toe, their scalp, and even part of their face. Oh it's my so bad. God. One of the most common causes of loris. And look, at, nah, I ain't gonna lie. With the light on, it's cute, but look at this little demon thing. It should, should not be existing. Look at it. It's getting bit by a rival. An eight-year study done on about 80 slow lorises found that over 20% of them were seriously maimed in conflicts, with some missing eyes, ears, fingers, toes, and more. It's nasty work, and it puts the slow loris on the very short list of animals that use venom against their own kind. And it's no coincidence that one of the others is next. Two things about platypuses the public should know. One is that about six pounds and less than two feet long, they're way smaller than you think. And two is that they're violently venomous. Really? Males have an ankle spur that they use in fights, and like the loris, the consequences of losing are incredibly painful. In 1991, Australian veteran Keith Payne was struck by a platypus, and in his own words, the immediate pain was far worse than getting struck by shrapnel. And it only got Damn. worse. The excruciating pain didn't go away after a month, even after he was shot up with morphine. And just how much pain are we talking? Well, according to him, just the weight of a warm towel on this thing caused incapacitating agony. Oh my Even God. 15 years after, he claimed to still be in discomfort, and this guy wasn't sweet or nothing. He actually earned the highest honor of the British Armed Forces for his performance in the Vietnam War. Same guy apparently got folded by a beaver otter cosplaying as a duck. Oh my God. And it's God. just platypus venom manipulates nerve cells to trigger pain in a way that can have you down. Excuse me? They said manipulates nerve cells. You fucking with the nervous system? So, like, your body's not in real pain. Your nerves just think you are. Oh, my God. I ain't gonna lie. Do yo, Doofus Merch was right. That nigga gotta go. Perry gotta go. Hell no. Nah. Perry got to go. Down horrendous for weeks, and not even enough morphine to roofie or rhino can bail you out. That's how you know Perry had love for the Doof. He could have had a pharmacist every flavor of f***ed up if he wanted to. That's why if you see two male platypi fighting, you'll often see the loser spend days rolling around and scratching. 
That's a platypus in crippling agony. And you can expect the same symptoms if you F around and find out with the next animal. Oh my Even God. though it's barely an inch long. Most people know why playing with oh, a Portuguese man of war is bad for your health. You heard me say most. The man of war is notorious for excruciatingly painful stings that they inflict on thousands a year. Not only that? can it cause nasty ah! bites like this, in worst case- Oh my God! Oh God! Oh God, I literally felt that. I had to like look at my arm to like, make sure I wasn't going through that pain. Right, my skin is crawling. Oh my God, I'm not rewinding that. I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that. Oh my God, that was terrible. Scenarios, it can trigger severe allergic reactions that can block your airways and suffocate. Excuse, not only are you doing that, you're suffocating me? Oh God. Most people know not to touch them, but a lot of those same people would do this. This is Glaucus Atlanticus, and more specifically, it's a tiny sea slug nudibranch. And what these oh, but they're so pretty. Boneless snails do is steal poison from other animals like anemones by eating them and storing the toxin in those weird fingertips growing out of their back. Excuse me? This nigga... This nigga like Kirby. He's just sucking up on the poisons and, and administering it. So, excuse me? I can't keep... I can't keep... What, what, why were these invented? I... These do not further the earth. What? Where? Just what? Just. It's cultural appropriation, but with poison. And the Glaucus does oh it to the man of war. Which is why, even though a two inch Glaucus is an overachiever, holding one and getting stung can lead to nausea, vomiting, allergic reactions, and you guessed it, pain. In fact, many think because the poison they steal is so concentrated, their sting is actually more powerful than the jellyfish understudy they take it from. Damn. Of the story. This is what it looks like to put a dent in your family's bloodline. Pro tip, if an animal's that small and goes out of its way to be seen, touching it's a great way to see your ancestors. I couldn't find a case of someone being seriously hurt by this tiny assault slug, so it's another example of an animal being too small to truly punish ignorance as often as they could. Completely different from the animal up next, cause real talk, if you haven't seen them in person, you would not believe how big they actually get. Hey, real quick, we got new merch, man. There's the uh, Share a Smile drop that had just released a couple of days ago. We got it in white, black, and tan. I bought back some of the old merch that was selling really good because you guys requested it. So uh, make sure you go check out the store. It will be linked in the description. And enjoy the rest of the video, man. Peace. We all know Steve Irwin, may God rest his soul. And Low key, he was wilding the fuck out. Low key, with the baby in hand is crazy. I don't know how they allowed that. You know, like, I fuck with Steve Irvin, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we fuck with Steve over on this side. But with, why do I feel like that was baby Steve Irwin? You know what I'm saying? But with a baby in hand, it's crazy. And his son and shadow clone, yep. Robert Irwin. Yep, I knew it. I knew he was holding his son in hand. I knew it. Irwin. Just like his father, Robert got the same animal lover's gene. But there is one animal he's terrified of, and you probably never guess it. According to him, the animal that scares him the most and has the most smoke for him Crazy, right? That's a wombat. And yeah, they really do get that big. Damn. And in the words of the spawn of khaki animal Jesus, crocodiles are apparently easier to work with than wombats, since wombats are bloodthirsty oh. psychopaths. Oh my god, look at his eyes, bro. What no boy, what the fuck? And while he probably was exaggerating a little, wombats still ain't the ones to play with. At 25 miles per hour, wombats are fast enough to catch Excuse a Excuse me? <laughs> look at his little feet. But that bitch was taking off. But wombats still ain't the ones to play with. At 25 miles per Damn. hour, wombats are fast enough to catch a ticket in a school zone and more than fast enough to catch oh a Oh my car. god, bro. Look. Now nah, that nigga diesel as the fuck. Look. 5 miles per hour, wombats are fast enough to catch a ticket in a school zone and more than... Look. Look how buff it looks. That shit look buff as the fuck. Look. Look at it. Fast enough. Oh, hell no. Nah. That shit looks like a stuffed animal bear. Literally taking like life and running at you bro they catch you off guard they have a tough cartilage reinforced butt that they use to crush the skulls of their enemies against their burrows yeah getting your life subscription terminated through twerking is a possibility <laughs> if you're an to a wombat but more importantly they have jaws more than capable of tearing chunks out of your ankles and cats which is what these furry bowling balls usually go for victim carrie evans was hospitalized with over 20 bites and lacerations after she was mauled by the evil bulking twin of the quokka and oh, in 2020 no. a family nearly got squad wiped by a wombat after the one they were raising for a tv show turned on them mauling his owner and handing out work to any kin that tried stepping in without prejudice 
Buddy almost folded four generations of people, and it took a whole axe to get him to act right. Jesus. And that's not even mentioning the damage an angry fur meatball can do to your car. Moral of the story, if anyone in this man's bloodline don't rock with him, neither do I. Problem is, 99% of the population rocks with pandas and forgets it's still a bear that was made after the printer ran out of color. It's still a bear, and you can have a panda bear, is. a yogi bear, or a nose candy bear. If it ends in a B-E-A-R, you'll be last seen in an E-R, if you even get that far. So fun fact, gorillas have a stronger bite force than grizzly bears and can crack a coconut, and that's because they spend so much of their time crushing vegetation. As bamboo merchants that commit 16 hours a day to binging it, giant pandas might have the most underrated bite in the entire animal kingdom. A Look at his little teeth! Hold on, chat. Now, but the little teeth, it. though. Giant pandas might have the most. Look at the little. <laughs> the fangs is crazy, but the little teeth right between them. They're just so cute. Look. Under. <laughs> little teeth. Rated bite in the entire animal kingdom. A study was done comparing the bite force of carnivores relative to their body size using a value known as the bite force quotient. African lions were given a bite force quotient of 124. The jaguar, believed to be pound for pound the strongest cat, earned a 137. And while being smaller than both, African painted dogs flexed a bone crushing 142. And where did giant pandas fall? With a BFQ of 151, giant pandas Damn. scored a bronze medal on the bite force scale, only behind the least weasel and an assault and battery happy looty tune. That's strong enough to rip flesh, tear tendons, and shatter bone. Damn. The thing is, pandas have all the tools of a predator, but with gerbil software. But even though this giant cow rabbit doesn't know how to kill, they can be persuaded into trying, and it's usually in zoos. In 2006, a oh, shit. tourist had a chunk of his calf ripped off by a pissed off panda after he tried to pet it. No. Oh my god! In 2009, a tourist fell into an enclosure and also paid a calf tax. Later the same year, another tourist managed to fall into an enclosure and the barcode bear nearly turned him into a serial number on a police report, ripping off parts of his foot and elbow. In oh my god! Little teeth is not so little in right now, bro. Godly. Juan Quan Shi sued the government and won for over $80,000. The reason was because officials had chased a giant panda onto his land and a generationally heated bear crushed Juan's leg like a celery stick. Oh, fuck. Look at his leg. Oh, my God. And my personal favorite story. A man tried wrestling a biracial black Air Force to impress a woman and appropriately got partially handled. He wasn't hurt, but the bear bodied him and even shredded his pants in the process, which was the closest he'd get to foreplay that entire day. It's no secret there's no end to the copious amounts of bull effery in the ocean, but there's still some animals people let slide especially if they've been in a movie. One of these fish can do you dirty, and Swear. this time the clown's not it. The regal blue tang is actually venomous, with caudal spines sharp enough to slice open skin, and when threatened, Swear. they'll whip their bodies from side to side. It's like a junkie waving a broken bottle at you, and the deep lacerations it can cause are almost guaranteed to get infected. And thanks to a certain Pixar movie, there's at least one kid out there that got a bacterial infection just because Ellen DeGeneres played a fish well. Not only that, but the blue tang is toxic to humans and can cause ciguatera poisoning to the people that eat it. An even worse mistake when people try it with the next animal, because the cute derp guppy is one of the most poisonous things alive. Oh, look at the that! The <laughs> animal, because the cute derp... Look at that! <laughs> Guppy is one of the most poisonous things alive. The tetrodotoxin in one pufferfish can bury 30 people. It's about 30? 1,200 times more toxic than cyanide, and there's no actual antidote. All that in Mrs. Puff's X is still considered a delicacy. The fugu blowfish is a prized dish in Japan, but it's also Russian roulette, because if the chef misses by even a tenth of an inch, it's the customer that gets cooked. Here's what would happen if you got poisoned. In about 10 minutes, your mouth would go numb and you would start to feel dizzy and unreasonably tired. You'd get an overwhelming headache to go with nausea and it'd slowly get harder and harder to breathe. Eventually, you'd get so exhausted you'd fall asleep and likely never wake up. Damn. And until then, you would have been conscious for everything. It's just that you'd be paralyzed and unable to talk or move. The only thing people could do to save you is pump your stomach, put you on life support, and God on speed dial. It's said that up to 100 people get flatlined by Fugu a year, and most of that are people that try it at home. Which means by the time they realize they messed up, they can't run, call, or even scream for help. Damn. All they can do is struggle to get air and watch everything turn black like the end of Sopranos. But not even fish fentanyl has a higher body count than the last animal. A lot of people think snails are cute, yet snails are partially responsible for crossing 200,000 names off the census a year. What the fuck? is a parasitic disease caused by worms with millions affected right now. And those worms are released by snails. The sickness is most common in tropical third world countries with limited access to clean fresh water. With about 700 million people living in at-risk areas, it's one of the most devastating parasitic diseases of all time, only Damn. second to malaria. And even if snails aren't the primary suspects, with them taxiing the bug, 
At the very least, they're accomplices. Now you see why folks almost put Gary on a shirt. Matt's nail disease wasn't a joke. Yeah. But that's gonna do it for this video. Be sure to follow my TikTok and Instagram for more consistent content as you wait for the next video. Check out my book, 100 Animals That Can Effing End You. You might just see some of the guys from today on there. If you'd like to further support this channel, becoming a patron on Patreon earns you access to exclusive content, videos before I post them, and you can even help vote on what I cover in future videos. Other than that, make sure you drink water, hug your parents. Yes, parents, we're inclusive now. And I'll see y'all in the next one. As long as y'all don't do something like this. P please don't. I right, peace out. Oh, you little platypus. <laughs> That'd be weird, though. But she'll get around. Those little niggas murders.